I'm going to go ahead and record this conversation um, because I feel we're at the point where we want to share. And um, I'm getting so many people messaging me who want to talk. And so I thought, let's do it. Let's just talk. Um, and like also about, about just like everything or what? Well, I have some things laid out here. Um, but basically, I don't know if we're going to end up sharing this information. So if we happen to, hello, I'm Cindy Libnall, and I am a naturopath and um, holistic nutritionist. And I'm here with my friend, Helen, who is also a holistic nutritionist. And we have actually met each other through our schooling and um, as colleagues in our career. Um, but yeah, I've been having a lot of requests for people wanting to talk. Um, I don't think people have a voice right now. People don't, I don't think, I don't know. I think you can agree because you messaged me too. We've talked before, but you know, you messaged me out of the blue and asked me how I was doing. And I kind of sent you some memes like, you know, ah, going a little crazy. Um, and then I had another woman reach out to me who actually went to our school for a short time. Um, and wanted to talk to and I was like wow like it's the energy is in the air like people want to talk now like they want to talk about these things so hi Helen hey it's good to see you again it's been a little it's while been, it has been a while yeah. things have been crazy different over here yeah in our yeah. world yeah yeah well because the last time that we talked um, so if you want to go ahead and like introduce yourself a little bit, but the last time that we talked, um, you were about, you were making some big changes or questioning some big changes. You had a lot going on. So go ahead and, um, introduce yourself and tell me how, how are things going? What's, what's happening with you? Well, <clears throat> so as you said, I am a holistic nutritionist. Um, and so I, help mom like help mom busy moms I guess in the online space to um just bring them bring your bodies back to homeostasis um so that they can start feeling better and spend more time in their relationships um with their husband with their kids and doing the things that they enjoy um and so as a busy mom myself I totally understand I understand what it feels like to have like no energy and just be completely exhausted all the time and not being able to do the things that I like full of bloat full of acid reflux not able to sleep um, and just tired 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 so um so that's what I do I guess in the online world um in my holistic nutrition practice um, and so I have been doing that for the last three years or so, three or four years, um, as a side thing, because I really enjoy like all things, health and wellness, nutrition. And so, um, it really is a passion, I guess, of mine. And so that's how it started as, as a passion. And I really wanted to be able to help people. So it was kind of a side thing, um, my full-time job was working with um, working in mental health. And so I worked with um, chronic and persistent mental illness out in the community, um, you know, working with um, those people in their homes and just in their own space, which is awesome. It's, it's also a nice, I really enjoy that too. Um, but of course that had changed as of, you know, December due to all of the different mandates and things that have come forth, I guess, for everybody. And so it's really, um, it, it's, it's had a lot of positive impact, I guess, in terms of my self growth and my development and um, my faith and all kinds of things internally that's happening. But it's also impacted my family, um, myself and my family greatly um, in terms of, um, you know, being able to provide financially uh, because, you know, I'm no, I am no longer working within and my that's business. Right. You, made, you made a decision to go because of, they were, they were basically forcing you 
to take um, medical treatments that you did not want to take? That's what was happening. Absolutely. Um, just completely, I, like it, it just was completely um, against every bit of belief um, that I have. My gut just, I, I wish I could explain the feeling, um, but when my conscience is saying absolutely no, I feel like I need to go with that regardless of what, you know, somebody else is, is telling me that I need to do. If I feel that strongly um, to the point where it, it really feels like a blow to the stomach, like physical blow to the stomach, then that tells me this just isn't right for me. And so, so yeah, so, so that's kind of what happened. Um, and here I am um, mm -hmm. diving in two feet now, of course, with my nutrition practice online and helping women in the online space. So um, lots of, you know, there, there's, there's been both sides, I guess, of the fence. Um, you know, I'm very sad and upset and angry and all of the things as probably many people are um, over the whole situation. Um, but again, there's been so much growth, um, so much personal development that has happened in these past three months. I don't even know where to begin to right. share. Right. It's just so massive. Yeah. You were, cause you yeah. were, you were catapulted into having to make a choice basically. And it really kind of opened your eyes as you had to really figure out what you wanted to do in that moment, right? Because I, if I remember correctly, and you were wretched, you were wretched over this choice. Like you loved your job. You absolutely adored your job. And I, I remember, yeah, and you were, you were wretched about it. Like the way that I sometimes say it too, in, in the way that I was feeling um, similar to you, but it's almost like rape, you know, like, I mean, really seriously, um, hard to explain, but anyone who is in a position who in their gut, like in their soul, mm -hmm. feels wretched over having to be forced into a medical procedure, which is what it is, um, it, it really did feel wretched. And I, I, I felt you, I felt you with all of that. So tell everybody what's the name of your, your practice now. You're in, you're online. So you can basically see anyone who's, who's struggling with, with chronic illness. And, and so what do you focus on mostly just busy ladies and hormones kind of thing or? I do. So I focus on busy moms and the reason and why I guess it's because of you know I guess where my story started in terms of you know having children and having to deal with some of their ill symptoms as as they grew up like through childhood as some of those things um, kind of came to surface and so I realized that I can't do this until I bring my own back my own health back to where it needs to be so I you know I can't be falling asleep on the couch while my kids are running around doing things my three-year-old was dancing on my countertop when I just happened to doze off sitting up on the couch and that was when I realized I was like well okay like something's got to change here because I can't this isn't okay um <clears throat> I was having chronic um acid reflux uh, I was on medication for that to kind of tame that down. Um, I was having really big bouts of anxiety. Um, I remember, so this is really going personal, I guess, but I remember them being so uh, intense at one point that I would ask my husband to sit with me and just like hold, hold me because I felt like I was shaken out of my skin and I could not calm myself down. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, there was that going on and then I couldn't, I didn't have the energy to kind of be with him at the end of the day. You know, I mean, I think it's important. We spend time in our relationships. 
um, you know, we're present in our relationship. You want to be intimate with your, your spouse, right? Um, and, and those things didn't happen because I was just so tired all the time when the kids went to bed. It was time for mom to go to bed. And when mom woke up in the morning, mom was like, oh, you know, it's 12 hours till bedtime. I can't wait till bedtime. So when you're counting down to bedtime, you know, you're tired, right? right. <clears throat> and so anyways, so that was, that was kind of my journey, I guess, to um, my own wellness road. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, you know, there was, there was all those things going on. My stomach was really bloated all the time. And so I needed to figure out a solution. And so having lived that and having come up, came, having come up with a solution, knowing that it, you know, can help other moms in that situation so that they can do the things that they want to do, be with their kids, be with their husband. So, um, so that is, that is what I'm doing. And that's why I focused on um, busy moms, because I am as well. I also have a child who has type one diabetes. So for those people who don't know, that is a 24 hour, seven day a week nursing illness. It does not go away. There is no, you know, there is no cure. Right. All we can do is manage. Right. And so, you know, she was diagnosed just before her eighth birthday. She's 15 now. Um, and so that's been um, certainly a life changer. And uh, that had also to do with my fatigue, right? Having to get up through the night and so on. Um, but yeah, uh, I needed, I needed to make this change. And so I want to help other busy moms just like me do the same thing. Great. That sounds yeah. so awesome. So what do you think is going on right now? Tell me about what's been happening. We've, we've been watching um, Canada kind of um, change. Just to, I'm just going to add into that a little bit of my story. So because people are just getting to know us, I, I'm not sure where this is going to lead, but I love conversations with other people. But I can relate to all of those things because that's how I found myself becoming a naturopath, holistic nutritionist was my own story. You were just telling us about your daughter who um, with type one diabetes is autoimmune. So that's an autoimmune disorder. And so that is very um, near to my heart. I, I have three autoimmune diseases myself. And so that's how I found myself in, into my health journey, um, starting at the age of seven years old. Uh, there was some trauma there, but um, migraine headaches, endometriosis, I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is autoimmunity against my thyroid, and was even starting with um, rheumatoid arthritis. And so it, it was a long road for me as well, and um, found myself in a conventional system from a very young age, and just listening to doctor after doctor and specialist after specialist. And I'm just one of those people who is always asking questions. Mm -hmm. I question everything. I'm sure I drove my family and my parents insane as a child. I was considered ADD, ADHD, but we, we know, you and I know that that has a lot to do with our gut health. Um, so it was just, you know, from, from the get go. <clears throat> but I was never really able to let things go. So I went through the system for a long time in the journey of the normal um, American way of life, wanting to have children, uh, getting married, you know, in my twenties, uh, realizing that I was infertile, um, that I had had issues with some um, vaccine injury and um, unbeknownst to me at the time, my hormone issues uh, were never, explained to me um, and I think I started to realize that that's how they kept us in the system was you never really got any answers to your questions and so that's how I found myself I found myself um, in another specialist's office after 20 years of dealing with the same thing and many other doctors throughout the United States and now in Canada um, feeling berated like I had gone back in time, 20 years, uh, being 
treated like I don't know what the heck I was talking about and to be realizing at that time that I probably knew more than any of the specialists at that time that I was seeing. And so made a decision to go back to school and had all of the eye opening experiences. And I think that's where people don't realize until they jump into these decisions to learn more about our natural health and our, and our physical bodies and our physiology and, and uh, gut brain access and connections and inflammation and all of these things um, yeah. that are never talked about. And when you ask about them, they're fluffed off. Like it means absolutely nothing. And so um, being furious is what got me, <laughs> what got me into school, <laughs> right? And then that was just caught, catapulted and fell right into where we are. And I think um, it's funny because I, I had a group program where I would teach people about inflammation and, and in the first class that we would go through, we would talk about the, um, how the system is set up in the conventional practice right? and how it's all just about one diagnosis and two pharmacology and that's yeah. all. And that our health system really has nothing to do with health. It has to do with illness, yep. right? And the eye, the eye-opening experiences that I know that you have also had through our education and our own healing journeys, and then sharing those and seeing our clients have healing journeys. And the other thing that is so clear to me is seeing the absolute ignorance behind health, meaning um, because I'm no longer seeing clients one on one. I, um, I actually am a naturopath that can accept health insurance and I worked really, really hard to be able to have that ability. But I found um, during my one on one practice and through the last two years with this pandemic, um, I find that people have no problem handing me $600 to change their health. Yeah. And then within two meetings, they've ghosted me. And I never hear from them again. No matter mm -hmm. how many times I reach out, there are people who will go through the program, they'll be so successful, they'll, they'll, they'll come out healthy on the other side all the eye-opening experiences, oh my goodness, all the awareness, holy crap, I can't believe I didn't know this stuff. And then there's those people who, they just can't do it, you know? And um, I got to a point where I couldn't do that and I couldn't do that. I couldn't take people's money who were not willing to help themselves. I found Absolutely. it- I, I agree there. Now, I did something a little different, but exactly what you're saying. And that's kind of how I um, ended up with the program that I ended up with. Yes. For exactly that reason. Yeah. yeah. I think we're all starting to transition a little bit with that, too. I've, I, I've been taking my programs and I'm trying to convert them into a um, self-taught program so people who do want to change their lives will still have access to that information because the information is truly everywhere but then when I found um, these last two years I couldn't handle I couldn't handle the ignorance and I know people are going to really um probably come out of their skin by hearing that I'm not calling anyone ignorant or anything like that. If that triggers someone, maybe, you know, that's a good, that's a good indication that maybe you want to take a look at your health and what's going on with you. If, if, if those mm -hmm. words affect someone, right. Hearing them. But I, I, um, I really got lost in these last two years. Uh, and I know that everyone has. Yeah. And so I, look at, I look at people like you and I who have been so educated in the natural way of living and stress reduction 
and um, the reality of mainstream media and the reality of our conventional health practices and government run facilities. And it's just the eye opening experiences that have continued to come through these last two years and how you finally look back and you say, you see how trained we all are. Yeah. Right. I'm sure you can totally see it. And even the people who aren't in the awareness that we're in, I think are finally starting to have some awakening. Do you, would you agree with that? Absolutely, I would, yep. Um, I think that we're seeing more and more things come to surface, come to light, um, which is good. Uh, and that I, I go back to, so I guess my belief system too is that um, things happen for a reason. Um, it, it puts us in a position that we didn't expect to be in. Now, again, that doesn't change my feelings towards what's happening in the world. Um, it doesn't change my feelings on how it's impacted myself and my family. Um, but I also, I can't, I can't help but go back to that, that growth and that development and, um, you know, how faith has really carried me through, you know, through all of this, oh, yeah. especially over these last three months. Um, and so I guess, you know, even in a not so good situation, if we can kind of see past that, um, if you can pull out those things that are positive and how they've helped you become a better person mm -hmm. um, or how they've impacted your life on a positive level, um, I think that's amazing. Like, I think that that's extremely, extremely important. And for me, I'm not saying it hasn't been hard because it's been extremely hard and extremely stressful. Um, and I still get the, the, the feeling like the blow to the stomach, yeah. um, not knowing, but something that I have been really, um, instilling in myself and in my thought process is, um, anxiety comes from looking into the future. It is looking into the future is nothing that we can control. It is beyond our control. There is nothing we can do if things are going to unfold in the future. And so if I sit and I dwell on whatever it is, um, whatever it is, can I pay my mortgage? Um, you know, is what else is going to come out that we're going to have to do or that we're going to have to follow? I can sit and I can say, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and I will drive myself stir crazy. So when I have thoughts that come to my mind like that, I have had to so hardly, like so hard, I had to train my, my thought process for when that those things come up, healthy ways of pushing those out. So no, you know what? And, and, and it is, it is internal dialogue that I, I have to constantly have with myself you know what no you don't know I don't know but right now not knowing and sitting and thinking about it and getting all worked up about it is not going to be able that is not going to allow me to be present with my kids that's not going to allow me to be present with my husband that's not going to allow me to move forth or forward in the day okay. and so that is something that I have I, I have had to train my, and again, I'm going back to, it doesn't mean that those feelings don't go away, right? It doesn't mean that you, you don't physically feel some of those stress and anxiety symptoms, but it allows me to go on with my day and do the things that I need to do. Yes. Um, you know, um, which, which kind of brings me back and sort of change the subject, but not really, but it brings me back to my smoking days so I was a smoker and I won't even lie I loved smoking I loved I I did I you know I would have a cup of coffee and probably four cigarettes to that one cup of coffee I smoked for a lot of years 
Um, I'm embarrassed to even say. Me too. Well, we started when I was 19. So, yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, and so that internal dialogue, when I was ready to quit smoking, that internal dialogue had to happen all the time and and it it brings me back to that because anxiety it doesn't matter I guess whatever it is that you're dealing with whatever it is that you're struggling with for me I have to have that internal dialogue so it literally is like two people having a conversation in my head yes um and that is what I had to do during smoking times and that's what I had to do during this you know these stressful life times right yeah um exact same thing and so I, I guess going back to like pulling out some of those positive things that's really what helped me um and continues to help me get through and to think outside the box because yeah. sometimes we're so boxed in that we can't see beyond that box Absolutely. and that brings out fear too right that's yeah. you're scared because nobody knows what's outside that box and so I've tried to let all of that go um, and continue to do so um, by, you know, carrying on with my faith and also having those, those, those talks with myself, um, exercising, you know, trying to do some of those de-stressing, natural de-stressing things, going for a walk, whatever. Yes. Um, but yeah, so and I guess trusting that's yourself. what's trusting, that? Trusting yourself. Absolutely. And, and and going with the process even though the process doesn't feel I don't want to say good because it, well it doesn't feel it good it doesn't feel good uncomfortable, uncomfortable very yeah. uncomfortable right yeah. so trust in the process that you're going through um the journey that you're taking trusting that this is what is supposed to happen and you're going to have these you know humps and bumps and ruts in the road along and and just learning how to kind of um navigate those right and how sure. to, yeah so sure a lot of i'm telling you it's really been a lot of 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 deep personal growth and development for me and just allowing myself to kind of think outside that circle and it's so nice to share that out loud because everyone is in the same boat and I think what's happened is people have stopped listening to their own intuition um, the propaganda yeah. is so heavy the training is so thick at this time and 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 the ironic part is that we have an awareness we have been taught we have realized these things before this pandemic even hit us mm -hmm. you know we were aware of the training the propaganda the food companies the all of it right and then when this all happened there were so many of us whose instincts told us um this just doesn't seem right yep. you know the fear mongering like um the fact that a, a seal R O N A thing is actually been existing for thousands and thousands of years. This is no different than what our physical bodies have been dealing with on this planet for ages. And so watching everyone kind of fall into this um, training and not trusting themselves created a new level of mm -hmm. anxiety that I have never seen, even in us who are educated in our hormones, how our bodies react to the uncomfort net, you know, the uncomfortability of, of anxiety. Like we literally know what's physically happening in our body, yet we're suffering just as much. So to see the people who don't realize what's happening physically inside of them and to be being bombarded with all of this programming and watching people become more chronically ill it's been it's been stressful to say the least right yeah. and yeah. people have stopped listening to their own intuition when everything in you is telling you something 
it's okay for you to listen to yourself. In fact, you should. <laughs> you should. Absolutely. Should and I think that if, if we don't, eventually we stop hearing it, right? Which, yes. which you start, if you stop hearing that intuition or that conscience talking to you, you're in trouble. Yes. So, and that's um, as well. That's, that's, a, that's in a physical reality as well, like physical Ooh. manifestation of illness. Yeah. Just by yeah. ignoring your own instinctual feelings or emotions. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite a transition. Um, so I have a food business as well. And I feel as though I've just been put on hold. Um, but like you, um, everything in me, everything in me, I've been trying so hard to listen mm -hmm. to what my, my soul is telling me. And it took so long for me to find that soul, that person, that was listening to themselves because I was so outside of myself in trauma, in programming, in the narrative, in the, you know, um, trying to keep up with the Joneses, in mm -hmm. fighting for a career, in, in trying to accept myself with all of my issues, my health issues, you know, it, it it took a long time for me to get to a place where I actually trusted myself, where I actually yeah. knew um, that listening to myself was okay. So the amount of fear and anxiety and, 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 and in unsurety that's out there with people right now, um, you know, I pray for you. We pray for you because, and, and, and trust yourself and trust yourself. And hopefully we can do this again, Helen. I very much enjoy our conversations. And I think it's really great to give some food for thought for people. I mean, that's what we do. We, we live in food and in nutrition and, and nourishing ourselves. And we just want, I just want, and I know you want that too, but we just want everyone to realize that you're not alone. And I, I would love to be able to find a, a safe way to, um, to share with people that it's okay, you know, and to talk about these different things and things that come up. Um, I am banned from Facebook, so I am going to post this. But I'm also going to, so if you want to share it, feel free, please do. And um, I think what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to start a um, channel on brighteon.com. Now, Brighteon, we can't even write out that word on Facebook, people. Uh, you will get flagged. It's, it's a completely banned platform. It's a free platform, freedom of speech. And there's a lot of great stuff there. But I know that no matter what we talk about, that we can house it there and we will never have to worry about being taken down or censored. Um, and really all we will ever talk about is, is, is the truth in, in health and in self food for <laughs> thought, really real food for thought. Um, mm -hmm. No judgment, no narratives, no, no, um, no sales pitches. None of that, just pure conversation. And I think that's what we're lacking. That, you know, there's a lot of dialogue, lots of dialogue coming, lots of stuff, both sides. You don't know what to yep. listen to. Yep. And I think what I would like to try to do is create a safe space where we can just talk and mm -hmm. um, talk about whatever that might be. And so after having sharing, shared this, um, if any of you, uh, please follow us both. Um, we're both on mm -hmm. Facebook. And like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to make one on Brighteon. I think I'm going to call it food for thought, which I just think sure. just came to me and it sounds fantastic. And, um, and I would love to do this again. And if you guys have any questions, if there's things that have been bothering you, if you are struggling in your health journey and you want to ask us some questions or, you know, um, it's all open. It's all open. If you want to talk about 
things we there are certain words it's so funny because helen and i have been now like we've been trained that there are things we can't talk about and so it'll probably be weird at first for us to start talking about things that we've been avoiding um but it's all open all out there and want to invite anyone who wants to have conversations and, and be involved with this with us and so uh, yeah so tell me what you think's going on like uh, we've had some real crazy stuff happen. Today is um, the 28th of February, where tomorrow is March 1st. And uh, basically, we, as the world knows, we had a crazy beautiful convoy that went on um, in, in the stand of freedom here in Canada. And it has definitely made an impact, not only globally, but locally, we are finding our provinces are starting to lift restrictions and um, and even in cases mandates. Um, but in my I, I have to say, um, honestly, that I think that that is just a ploy. I think it's just another move in a chess game. I think they are feeling pressured to to make these changes. Um, but now that we are transitioning into a war um, with Russia and China, which I have actually been saying is on its way for like the last two years, um, we can talk about that on another another time. But um, tell me what you think is happening right now. What do you think about what's going on? Well, I feel the same as you do in terms of, you know, I feel like there is pressure um, from Canadians to start opening some of these things up um, and, and have people wanting to get back to the everyday. I don't think that the higher ups will put it to Canadians that way though. Um, but I also think, um, so as happy as I am to hear that things are going to start opening, um, I also think that there's a bigger plan um that's you know more things are coming i don't know what those are i guess i kind of sort of have a feeling but we will talk about that next time you want to do that <laughs> we'll get into yeah because i'm sure there are people who are like what are they talking about you know and are they are those are they two of those like conspiracy theory people you know and um so maybe we should maybe we should touch a little bit on that maybe next time what do you think Maybe okay. we'll see how things yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how things go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of like to get into what it is that you do with your clients. Yeah, what? I'd like to learn. Yeah, I would really like to learn a little bit um, about who you help, what you do with your with your clients. Um, yeah, and what kind of magical things do you have up your sleeve that, uh, yeah. All right, well then next time we'll talk about some uh, some chronic illness and, and how I adjust that. Because that's, um, so you're with Busy Moms and, and I am with, uh, I, I tend to focus more on uh, menopausal age women. That's who I am. And, um, and I focus on the things that I've struggled with. And so I deal a lot with chronic illness and autoimmunity is my, is my, uh, my game. So I would really like so much of it. You have, um, I'm assuming that you have a Facebook audience of some sort, you have a group or you have a page. I do. I, um, I am the creator of move food therapy and that is how I'm known on Facebook. So you can find me under move food therapy but my page is restricted right now. Okay. So okay. It's very hard. If you go there, you will be able to find me, but I have not been very active there given the fact that of course I am restricted for 90 days and don't know even if I will be getting that account back. And so this was another reason why I really wanted to just start somewhere fresh. I think people are at a point now where, um, they're tired of scrolling and I, I don't, I, I got to a point on Facebook 
have to say I was religious to Facebook from the beginning. It helped me with my business quite a bit. Um, but now that I can't even, I can't talk about everything that I teach about. So I can't talk about medications and how they affect your chronic illness or your autoimmunity. I can't talk about um, inflammation. I can't even use the word I M M U N I T Y um, in case I happen to post this on Facebook. Don't know if you'll see it anyway, but I don't want you to get flagged either if you share it. Uh, but there are words, I mean, there are literally words. I, I cannot communicate with my audience anymore. And I think it's because I, I focus on chronic illness and um, the censorship within social media is really heavy right now. And um, that's the other reason why uh, I've kind of been pushed right out of my practice, basically. Uh, we got closed down. I was with a naturopathic doctor. Um, we got shut down because of COVID. Our associations closed us down. We were only allowed to do online uh, programs. And then uh, I bought a, a, a home that had a, a, built a section in the back where it was going to be opening my practice with an osteopath and COVID shut everything down. And so there was a lot of that going on. And I developed some online group programs that I did within the last two years. So we focus on, I'm not supposed to use even disease names, but um, I'm putting this on Brighty on. And I said, I wasn't gonna not, I, I wasn't gonna hold my voice back anymore. So I'm gonna use words. Um, so we focus on type two diabetes and hormone imbalances and then autoimmunity. So autoimmunity is when your body gets so crazy, your immune system gets so crazy that it starts attacking your own healthy cells and organs. And that can manifest in many different ways. And actually these inoculations that are happening um, in my training are some of the largest culprits of autoimmune disease. And we're seeing it now, you know, when we follow the VAIR system and we follow the, um, the outcomes that are starting to show themselves to us and the data and the studies that are now coming out. And so, um, it's been hard for me because I haven't been able to speak about it. And I finally find that now we're getting to a point where people are open to even hearing about it because I find that during these last two years, people didn't even want to hear what I had to say mm -hmm. because they weren't in a place to receive it. Mm -hmm. um, everybody was so focused on this, virus that no one was paying attention to their internal homeostasis, their, home, their own balance, their own personal physical balance. And so it's been, uh, it's been a long road for me through, through, through this, but um, with, with the right, uh, the right programs, people can really turn things around. So yeah, I'd be happy to share more about that. Um, people can find me there but like I said it's kind of hard to find me right now <laughs> so I'm trying um, yeah. to try to bring do myself back out do you have an email list Cindy I do have an email list you can also find me at my website which again I'm going to be revamping that but that's uh, the hippiekitchen.com and um, you can find my contact information on that website there excellent so yeah, so hopefully be revamping as we go through this journey and um, just speaking more. I feel I don't want to market myself anymore. I, I don't want to be a fake um, person on social media. I want to be a real human being who interacts with real human beings. Um, I had even gotten somebody message me and they were like, oh, you should start a TikTok. And I, I put the app on my phone. And two hours later, I turned it off and was like, no freaking way. No freaking way. I, I, I am ADD enough as it is. I just can't even go there. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm trying to revamp. I'm trying to get more 
into being back in touch with people and, and, and conversations and sharing more. And I think online, there's a lot of give and take, like, oh, um, I'm going to give you this and then, you know, come here and I'll, if you pay me this or you do this or you join this, I'll, I'll give you some more. And I feel like it's so stressful. It's mm -hmm. so stressful. I'm not a professional marketer. I learned that yeah. over the last two years, having to learn how to do an online practice was a whole nother education in itself. And I'm just the food lady, you know what I mean? I'm just the food lady. I like to talk about food. I like to talk about health. And um, so this hopefully will be a, another good way for me to be able to get to do that with people and have wonderful conversations with people like you. And um, yeah, but this is great. Thank you for joining me this morning. Oh, you're welcome. So, you're welcome. And, Where's your website? What's your website's name? So mine is, it's just my name. So it's helenpaquette.com. Oh. Um, so I don't know if we can maybe put it somewhere because I'm sure people won't know how to spell the last name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just my name. It's just helenpaquette.com. Um, there's some, you know, as probably the same as yours, there's some different blogs and recipes and goodies to take away on there. Nice. Um, so yeah. And my contact information and all that good stuff is there as well. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Helen, for joining me today. And You're I hope welcome. you guys all check us out. Check out our websites and um, comment if you have questions. We would love to interact. That is, that is actually the best way we can teach people. That is the best way we can reach people. And um, the best way that people can help themselves is by being open to asking us the questions it's hard mm -hmm. for us to teach when we don't know what it is that you want to learn and mm -hmm. so i think this is a great start and thank you so much and maybe um maybe we can do this again next week for sure all right awesome i'll see you then and we'll see you okay. then all right thanks okay bye guys bye helen yeah. have a great day you too